Hey folks, welcome to Dre's Take. First and foremost, I just want to uh, say I, I hope you all made it through the storm with minimal or no damage at all. Um, I was blessed enough to be able to say uh, that's the case for me. For those that aren't, uh, I pray for a speedy return and recovery above and beyond where you were before the storm hit. And uh, my, my thoughts and prayers are definitely with you. This week, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, are we headed for another market crash? This topic came up because yesterday, Mike Smalley from Waterstone Mortgage, the Southeast Regional Vice President, very sharp guy and friend of mine, gave me a call and said, Andre, I've got this PowerPoint that I wanna share with you. Maybe it'd be good for a video. It's pretty crucial that we educate the public and get this information out so that the expectations around what's going on in the housing market are accurate uh, and informed. And I just wanna cover a couple of things in this PowerPoint because it's great. There are some good stats and graphs that uh, really support things I'm gonna be talking about here. I'm gonna link this PowerPoint in my weekly email, obviously, and also uh, in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. Feel free to take a look at that because I'm not gonna cover it in its entirety. I'm just gonna cover some of the main points that really stand out for me. So let's get started. The PowerPoint is entitled, Are We Headed for Another Real Estate Crash? And the first slide addresses the causes of the 2008 crash. Those causes are adjustable rate mortgages, no income verification, interest only loans, pay option adjustable rate mortgages, unemployment, inventory, and mortgage defaults. All of these combined make the issue, but I'm gonna focus primarily on inventory because to me that is the elephant in the room and probably the most interesting factor in all of this. Next slide goes on to say, well, why is 2022 different? And he notes unemployment, inventory, and mortgage defaults. Unemployment is incredibly low, even as we begin the onset of what some believe is a recession. Uh, some believe we're already actually in it. And despite that, pretty much every shop or business that you walk into these days has a help wanted sign. They need help and they're hiring. This is contrary to what the Fed actually wants to curb inflation. They would actually like to see unemployment rise, meaning less discretionary income in the economy, meaning less purchasing power by consumers uh, to kind of cool the economy. And unfortunately for them, that's not what they're seeing. We keep getting job reports that are beating expectations and that is fueling the rise in rates as they continue to try to combat uh, growth and we're not seeing that we're seeing unemployment remain low we're seeing new jobs added and that allows people to continue to collect the check and make their their house payments so that is going to bleed right into mortgage defaults so in 2008 you had a bunch of subprime lending going on you had almost a third of all mortgage applications were for adjustable rate mortgages and made to a plethora of people who were well below 620 credit score, which is kind of the benchmark credit score uh, for most lender guidelines these days. And so these people, they were, they, they were either underemployed, didn't really make enough to cover the payment that they were taking on, didn't have the credit worthiness to take on the uh, loan to begin with, and uh, on top of that, they were taking on loan products that were uh, subject to rate increases. And so if they couldn't make the initial payment, uh, when they lost their job and couldn't make the payment at all, uh, they defaulted on those mortgages and it became a domino effect for the other 35% of folks out there that were carrying an adjustable rate mortgage at the time. And it just became a domino effect. Uh, we don't have that in the marketplace anymore less than 5%. Matter of fact, about 4.7% of uh, active mortgages out there are adjustable rate mortgages now. That's a far cry from the uh, almost 35% that it was leading up to the crash. So less of these loans in the marketplace, meaning 95% uh, of mortgages in the marketplace right now are fixed rate mortgages and people are employed. And so their monthly mortgage isn't increasing 
they were able to purchase during the low interest environment that we were in for such a prolonged time where they refinanced during that time so they've got low interest rates on a fixed rate mortgage and they uh, are retaining their employment so they're able to make these payments and so you're just naturally not seeing as many mortgage defaults as we've seen in the 2008 crisis and we're likely not to and then third the big issue for me uh, is inventory We've added about 14 million households, yet we have 3 million fewer homes nationwide. So we've been in a dramatic, historically low inventory environment, and people still need a place to live regardless. And that's why you've seen rent skyrocket as well as home value skyrocket as people scurry towards whatever option they can find uh, to put a roof over their heads. To put it into perspective, there is a slide here in the PowerPoint that shows uh, active inventory at the peak right before the crash uh, was about 3.7 million homes on the market. Sharp contrast to today where there's only about 870,000 homes on the market. That's about four times the difference in available inventory. And so although you've got folks right now who are priced out because of interest rates making affordability an issue for them, and then you have people who could afford it but just are reluctant to take on an interest rate of six or seven percent uh, after seeing what we had seen uh, for so long in the, in the threes and actually dipping into the twos for a while there. But despite that temporary pullback, the demand is still there. It's just pent up and the supply is still dramatically low. And so at some point here, when the Fed reverses course on their monetary policy, that pent up demand is gonna flood back into the market uh, and we're gonna to continue to see the seller's market exacerbated and home values will uh, take off again at that point. In the meantime, you will see a temporary pullback. You may even see a correction in some select markets. Uh, my guess is it won't be any more than 10% and that won't necessarily be a blanket figure for the entire market, that'll just be in certain areas. Whereas other areas will be propped up, uh, maybe just see a flattening of uh, home appreciations, uh, and some will actually continue to gain in value. Real estate is very hyper-local, and it depends on the overall demographics of the area. Another interesting factor when it comes to inventory is the fact that uh, we have historically low vacancy rates. Back in 06, 07 at the peak, there's about a 3% vacancy rate, whereas now it's less than 1%, 0.8% actually. And what that means is that there's a lot less homes that are just sitting out there with nobody to cover the debt service. If there's a mortgage or uh, taxes and insurance that need to be paid on these properties, people are living in these homes, whether it's a tenant that's paying the rent that's covering that debt service or uh, it's owner occupied and the, uh, and the owner is living in the property. And so that creates an environment where there's less uh, urgency for sellers to, to sell. And we've seen that happen. Uh, when the rates ran up uh, and people realized that uh, uh, values, the, the appreciation uh, rocket is, is starting to settle, uh, a bunch of sellers came to the market and listed their properties. Uh, simultaneously rates ran up and buyers uh, backed away and it created this weird space for a minute where it looked like oh my gosh inventory is gonna run through the roof and there's gonna be nobody to buy them and we're gonna have this uh, this crash prices have to come down just as I predicted in previous videos uh, actually what happened is a lot of those homes did get absorbed uh, some remain in the market and has pushed the month's worth of supply up to about three months uh, which is still historically a seller's market. And then like clockwork, uh, when sellers realized it wasn't as easy to just put your home on the market and uh, sell it for 50 grand over asking anymore, a lot of sellers decided to stay sidelined. They stopped coming to the market. They say, hey, I got this low interest rate. Where am I gonna go? Am I gonna go buy somewhere else and take out a six or 7% interest rate? Uh, no. And so the same thing that uh, curbed new buyers from entering the market is also curbing uh, existing owners from listing their current home and uh, taking on a new mortgage or buying a, a new property. So you have less sellers actually coming to market. So listings are down. And so that's going to constrain inventory even more. 
less seller urgency, they don't have to move, they're staying put, they're not listing, so you're drying up the inventory situation again. And it's just keeping this imbalance between supply and demand alive, uh, even through this temporary downturn. As soon as the Fed reverses course on their monetary policy, those buyers that need housing come back to the market because it's, it's now affordable again as those rates drop, there's still gonna be an undersupply of inventory uh, and that's when things will take back off again. I think the next year is probably gonna be the hardest to get through. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna continue to see volatility in the market and price drops on existing listings. Looking forward about 18 months from now or so, I'm assuming that things are going to be back into a very healthy uh, market and it's gonna be weighted towards the sellers like it was in previous years. There's a lot of data in this uh, slide. Uh, you know, he's got some good data on the treasury notes and inversions and how those lead to recessions. He's also got some data on how recessions actually affect housing, which has only actually affected the housing market, I believe two out of the last, uh, I don't know how many recessions over the past hundred years, but only in two recessions has housing actually been affected. And one of those is the 2008 crisis that was actually caused by the housing market. Um, and so recessions don't necessarily always indicate um, a downward trajectory for the housing market. Matter of fact, you could argue the contrary. And so to answer the overarching question here, are we headed for another real estate crash? No, I don't believe so. Uh, I'm not gonna paint a rosy picture and say, oh, we're gonna see another 10, 15, 20% appreciation next year and everything's uh, wonderful in the housing market, no. But we gotta be realistic here. Uh, we won't see a crash. Uh, we may see a temporary and slight correction, and then I believe that it's actually gonna pick back up over the next 18 to 24 months in a very positive way. And in the meantime, we're just gonna see a flattening or minor correction, uh, if that. So what does this mean? Uh, well, if you're a buyer, it means that there's an opportunity here, an opportunity to get in, actually do some negotiating, and find the few sellers that are in tough situations that do need to sell, uh, and maybe get yourself a good deal. And then when rates reverse down the line, you could obviously refinance if you need to uh, and lower that payment, but you got a hold of the asset at a fair value today. It's gonna be a little shaky for the next 12 months or so, so you know, buckle up, but I don't think there's any reason to be concerned about a major cataclysmic correction or crash, so to speak. Again, I'm going to link all this, uh, this PowerPoint in, uh, in the video description here and in my weekly email. I really encourage you to look through that data so that you can wrap your head around what's really going on from the inside out and rest assured uh, that it's not as hectic or scary as maybe some of the headlines uh, you've read. And we don't necessarily need to be comparing this to 2008 because it is vastly different when it comes to the fundamentals in the marketplace. So that's Dre's take this week, guys. Uh, if you need me, you know where I am. Give me a call, 407-458-3199. Always happy to help. All right, y'all.